Okay, guys, so here's the deal, Attorney Walter Not You know who I am. I'm the most viewed and subscribed to Disability Attorney, but that's not important because what's important is we're going to answer some questions about Social Security Disability Insurance benefits and Supplemental Security Income. A lot of you guys want to know what to do when you get out of a job situation. You need to go into disability benefits. A lot of you need to know what you should be saying during your Social Security hearing or what you should be doing during your CDR, which is your Continuing Disability Review. We have the first caller on the phone, but I want to go into one quick thing. You get about five or seven minutes for these phone calls. Uh, you should have your legal uh, question right up front, no story mode. And then also, please remember, uh, you know, use a fake name throughout this process. Now, if you need more than five to seven minutes, right, uh, that's fine. I do a private one hour thing. It's a little mini contract. It's like 250 bucks. And then I'll go through with you, uh, you know, whatever the legal situation is related to disability benefits. If you need representation for disability benefits to actually obtain them, cool. Call the law firm during the nine to five disability resolution, Florida or disability resolution law firm. We'll pull it up on Google. All right. We have the first call on the phone. Uh, good, sir. Walk me through. Uh, what is your legal question? Go ahead. I'm in central Florida, Polk County. Um, I on recon, I had a personal issue, uh, dire need and also had a domestic violence issue. Uh, my wife and I, so it was putting me about to be evicted. I called DDS, spoke with them. They expedited my case. Three mm -hmm. months, I'm already assigned. Mm -hmm. I'm in a power wheelchair. Um, I have lymphedemia, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, mm -hmm. neck radiculopathy, multiple herniated discs, neck, lower back, multiple herniated disc. Uh, both sciatics are pinched. Um, my lawyer's kind of saying it's good that it got bumped up so quick. I mean, I don't know what to think about all that. And uh, they're sending me for a mental CE at the end of April. Uh, so just trying to see where I should be and what, what possibly things other that I can do yet. Do you have a physical CE coming as well? Is there just a mental CE that's set up? Just a mental status. Okay. And then with, with that understanding, how long have you been prescribed that ambulatory device? The wheelchair is only, the power wheelchair, I got about two months ago, maybe about six weeks ago. I went to the evaluation they sent me to mm -hmm. um, with the physical therapy back in January, I think. Okay. But before that, I had the quad cane for about a year now. Okay. Did they give any reason, technical denial, medical denial, as to why they denied you the first time to send you into recon? It was weird. Because I'm, I'm a dual case, SSDI, SSI. Mm -hmm. um, on SSDI, they tried to say I was past my DLI and they declined me medically before that. But they were wrong anyway because my DLI is actually June of 25, but they had a September of 20 two for some reason but that's fixed now and okay. then for ssi they said they see a severe impairment but they believe there's still maybe something i could do and if i don't agree with that i could refile an application but of course i appealed okay so real quick um all right so there was a dli issue got it now you're going to be going for mental because they have enough physical so here's the kicker because they haven't asked you for an additional physical and it was such a short period of time they're now trying to figure out how bad your me your mental side is and whether or not they can give you a vocational allowance, a grid out, or a listing level criteria. So um, let me ask you this. What's your current age? 43. Um, I did a CE already, too, on the mental, mm -hmm. and it came back as basically had a personality disorder. I was moderately depressed and that they didn't believe I could handle my own money. But I think that person didn't understand the way I answered it because she had it my wife and I were there together and she kept saying you know would you go spend your own you know if I sent you a store could you do it I said I could do the financial transaction but I could not do the shopping my wife would have to be with me I think she took it as I couldn't handle my own money but either way what I'm wondering is will that play over into the next CE or how does that work well, I mean, ultimately, you're going to go in for another CE review, and you know, you're hoping for an even more severe analysis. So, um, I mean, what? Okay, so what I do with my claimants is I run, you know, basically CE prep questions with them. You know, so like, uh, I'll gauge with you real quick, and then we got to switch over because we're we're at seven minutes. Um, all right, so can you walk me through what are the symptoms that you experience? Now, now what what is your most severe mental impairment? Uh, it's probably depression and migraines. 
Okay. So depression or, okay, so we're going to go with depression. What are four symptoms that you experience as a result of the depression that you have? Fatigue, uh, thoughts of death, um, tired. Okay. So fatigue again. And yeah, I, I was just realizing it was the same thing. Uh, loss of appetite and uh, major headaches. Okay. So what I'm hearing is you're giving me back some of the listing level criteria from the 12.04. Can you now give me something that's more specific to you, more from your language? Um, I, I don't want to do anything. It takes me two days just to do one load of laundry even with assistance, um, you know, the simplest of tasks could be very complicated. I can't follow anything much past a two-step process without having to stop and look back and make sure I'm on track or there, or even a 30 minute TV show is most of the time too much. And I'm going to have to watch it three or four times to get it. Okay. All right. Do you feel that I really know who you are by hearing that? Do you feel that my brain has been piqued, has been intrigued to figure out more about you? Or do you feel like those were pretty bland answers? Gotcha. Yeah, no, definitely probably more bland. Okay. I'm Let trying me... to think and be more personable about it. Eh? I'm going to hit you with it know. one more time. Yeah, so depression. Yeah. Can you tell me? Um, how does your depression affect uh, affect your daily activities? Yeah, I don't want to interact with people. Um, I'm afraid to go out. Like I, I could get in a crowded Walmart or something, and someone like bumps my wheelchair or bumps me one on my cane, and I just want to freak out. My anxiety goes through the roof, and I just want to get the heck out of there as quickly as possible because it's not a good feeling or situation. So did you tell me who is the main problem in that situation or what category of people and specifically someone that you run into? Can you give me any detail facts that are not just bland overview stuff? It's not a general type of person. I can just get combative with almost anyone and with the pain level and it's like you bump into me, it's more. I, I'm just short fuse and... I, Anything could trigger me or I could, or I get to the point where I just want to alienate myself because I don't want to be around people. And even for any number of reasons, whether it be pain or, or it, it, it argumentative, like I, I've had trouble obviously with family members, you know, my wife and I now are going through a divorce over all this. It's, it's everything and anyone almost. And it's obviously me. It's not them. Okay. So one thing I heard there that made sense uh, was the wife situation. So you left out that detail all the way until now when I talked to you about depression. Why did you wait so long to bring it out? Actually, I thought you had heard it. I did say in the beginning that my wife and I were going through a divorce. I just didn't oh. go into the detail of it with the depression, which I probably should have quicker, yes. Okay. Why does that cause you depression? Well, obviously, she was the one taking care of me. She showered me. I mean, I have lymphedemia on my right side. My arm and my leg get really huge. And, I mean, she literally would, like, wash my leg for me and shower me. And, I mean, I have bars in my bathroom. Um, you know, it's hard for me to even get in and out of the tub is maybe a foot high, a foot and a half high. Mm -hmm. And just to get in and out, it's very, very struggling. Okay. And, you know, she was always there for me. Now I have my brother here helping me with my 10-month-old son. But it's not the same, obviously. My brother's not going to shower me. Okay. <laughs> not nor do I want him to. Okay. Okay. Which answer do you think was the best so far as to why you experienced depression? Probably definitely the last two. The last two definitely were the best. So um, make it personal, make it with specific facts, get their brain to engage. Cause otherwise they see people all day long. You're not going to engage them. Yeah. They're just here. And, okay. He, he read the script. Right. Right. What you gave to me originally was a 12.04 summation on, you know, the first couple of bullet points that pop up, which to me is not helpful. You got to weave those into your personal stories so that their brain, you know, hears it, writes it down and includes it. They got to believe you, you know? 
Gotcha, gotcha. Now that makes a lot more sense. Perfect. And that's what I said. I maybe that's what happened in the first round because she she also made a comment about my sunglasses the first time. Because I had sunglasses on. She asked me to take them off. Mm -hmm. I did explain to her that I have really bad migraines. I, the lights were bugging me, but I would take them off. And me and she said yes, please. Mm -hmm. Then after about ten minutes, I said, "Ma'am, can I please put them back on?" Because she saw I was getting that chance, so I she let me put them back on. Gotcha. But. Again, I see now what you're talking about, the personal side of it. And she just wanted to see my face and see if I was actually, my eyes and see if I was actually looking at her and addressing her or if I was just talking random things and not caring, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Let me get to the next call. I will catch you a little bit later, but Thanks. sounds good. And you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Okay. Thank you for your time, Walter. You have a great night. Thank you. Good, sir. So, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, so that was good because that illustrated detail-oriented, story-based uh, connections. Let's go to the next one real quick. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. Remember to use a fake name throughout this process. You get about five to seven minutes. What is your legal question? Go ahead. Hey, Walter. It's Miranda Wright. Um, it should be an easy question. Um, so I had my denial, and I went with a disability um associate or a disability alliance thing and unbeknownst to me they went ahead and filed like right that day that i hired them i thought we were going to talk it over mm -hmm. before we did the appeal sure. uh, that didn't happen so i was preparing a a letter for appeal because i had read online that that can really help because this is your chance to actually elaborate on your your whole situation and not just the yes or no questions and stuff you know that you've done previously um, well, the appeal was filed for me. My doctor says he doesn't fill out RFCs. Uh, so like they really don't have enough on me. Um, should I go ahead and send that letter in or? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can absolutely send it. You just have to be careful because remember you want the attorney to go ahead and review specifically what's in the letter because at the end of the day, you know, you could be putting in something in there that could hurt your claim, kill your claim, whatever. So bottom line is, um, yeah, you just want them to review it first and it's okay. You can submit a little bit farther down the line. You know, the claim is probably going to sit at the local field office for two to three months anyways, before they send it up to DDS and then it'll get stuck in the developmental unit until somebody's assigned. But yeah, you should definitely send in a statement, um, how things are getting worse, a timeline as to the problems you're experiencing, uh, why medications aren't working out, what new symptoms and signs you're experiencing, all that stuff should go in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully I can get a hold of my worker, but um, I said briefly before, I'm not sure if you remember how the case manager that I got a hold of, <laughs> yeah. um, she didn't even know what an RFC was. Wow. So Jeez. Okay. I'm not great. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. I mean, you know, I always tell people like at least, so like there's, there's levels of like hiring people, but you know, I always tell people, I'm like, the attorneys get paid the same amount as like the non-legal reps. So like, why would you not, you know what I mean? Like take advantage. And that's the thing is that attorneys don't advertise as much as the non-legal reps because the non-legal reps, they got to advertise. Although not a lot of non-legal reps are woven into different programs. So they like auto get the referrals. So like, you know, workers comp insurance companies, they'll send it off to those guys. Uh, you know, unions, they'll send it off to those non-legal reps. So what they do is they get themselves like, you know, basically knitted into what some giant group does that needs people to go on to disability benefits. And uh, they just, they get their, their turnover, turnover, turnover from that. But um, yeah, see what you can do, write it up and then go from there. You know? Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Excellent guys. We're going to take, uh, I would say about two or three more calls. Let's keep it rolling real quick. We're at the 14 minute mark. Let's see if we got another call coming in. I want to wait till it up. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Hey, this is attorney Walter. Not Robert. to use a fake name throughout this process. Uh, what is your legal question? Go ahead. Yes, Walter. My name is Lynn. Um, so I have a question about uh, disability or uh, about um, back pay for SSDI. Okay. So I guess my question would be, um, how long are they actually supposed to take? To what? So once you're found disabled, how long does it take for you to get paid your your funds? Yeah. Okay. So basically, it, it differs all over the place, but there's some fundamental things that you should just kind of keep in mind. Um, once you're found disabled and you get your approval letter, you have to do that interview. It's the pre-effectuation interview. They call it the 
the the pre-effectuation or they call it the uh, pre-queue or they they call it all kinds of things. I've heard I've heard local FO people just call it all kinds of things, uh, pre-effect, uh, all that just you know little slangy versions of it. Um, but bottom line is you get the, you know, so you get your approval letter, you get, you do your phone call a week to two weeks thereafter. And then at that point, about a week later, uh, you'll get your first back paycheck and about a week and a half to two weeks later, you get your first forward paycheck. It could be slower. It could be faster. It depends on how quickly the payment division grabs it and sends out the funds for it. So the bottom line is you should be, once you get that decision letter, about a month away from getting your first check. Could be a little bit faster. It could be a little bit longer. But usually three to, I would say, five months, you should have it. But you're calling in, I'm guessing, because you've been waiting a couple, probably over two months and still haven't gotten anything, correct? That would be correct. Um, I was given the award. I was awarded my disability in December. My first uh, monthly paycheck was in January. Um, and I still haven't gotten back pay and we're going into April. Now, um, I did call. Yeah. Is there I back pay? Call, uh, yeah, go ahead. Customer yeah. service. Yeah. And they're like, well, it's still processing. They said something. They didn't even start the process until like February, like mid February or something like that. And it's like, okay, okay well, if my lawyer's already been paid, mm-hmm. he was paid, you know, I, I was found disabled December 11th. He was pa- he was paid, I think, like anywhere from the 16th to the 19th of December. What's taking so long? So if he was paid, that means that there was back pay. So we know that there should be something paid to you. Um, you're at the point now uh, where... Yeah, I, I was. Uh, they, they said it was about it was like six thousand fifty two. His portion was taken out of that, and I think there's like a small fee or something. Mm-hmm. So I know that it's supposed to be like like four thousand ish. You're certain that it didn't go into any bank accounts. Because you know, if the total amount was six grand, I mean, he should be looking at like a thousand something. So, I mean, this was, this sounds like it was a quick decision claim, correct? No, it wasn't. So did they move the alleged onset? Yeah. I I applied in March Mm -hmm. um, and I was found disabled in December. Yeah, that's a, that's a quick decision claim. That's very quick nowadays. Yeah. And, And keep in mind the first five months and the last month don't count for SSDI benefits. So, you know, you take all those out. Yeah. We're saying from August to November. Mm-hmm. So um, I was just trying to f- figure out why it's taking so long in general because, and I, I just recently called them a couple days ago and I was like, look, it's like, I'm just, I said, to me, this is taking, this seems like it's taking too long. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, the lawyer was paid in December. To me, it seems like I should have already had my back pay. So what was the reason they gave you? Um, they don't put a time limit on it, and, the, and it, you know, once the payment processing is complete, then they'll send it out. And but they said they'll, they'll send a letter out. Okay. All right. So, bottom line but, is, um, yeah. When was that phone call? Um, I can tell you in just a minute. Well, I mean, how many days ago? I mean, just general, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago. No, it's been the last couple of days. All right, so you probably you probably bumped them. They probably sent it over to the person who's supposed to be completing it, right? They're probably going to go ahead and work on the file now and complete it. You probably just it's it was sitting on somebody's desk or in their you know in their computer you know digital system to go ahead and process. Um, you should have already gotten the payment, but something happened. You probably just kind of fell through the cracks of the person who was, who was supposed to be working on it, you know. It's like I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> no, I mean, if you still don't get in, a, yeah, if you don't get in a month from now, I'd reach out to the regional field office and ask them to go ahead and check in on it. Um, they the customer service said that I, you know, after because I put in a request in, in the early part of February, mm-hmm. um, basically, you know, to give them until April fifteenth, and and that point, any time after that, I could probably call back into the field office and i mean yeah i mean if you're waiting that long at that point i'd reach out to the regional field office and get them to go ahead and and make a call and uh give a nudge to the person at the local fo that's supposed to process it 
yeah, well, that's that's all, you know. Okay, thank you for your time. I appreciate your time, Walter. Yeah, absolutely. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All righty, we're going to take, I would say, probably one more call. We're at uh, 20 minutes. Maybe take two more. We'll, we'll see how it goes real quick. Hold on. We've got it right here. Okay, good, good, good. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott, Disability Resolution PA. I remember to use a fake name throughout this process. What is the legal question that I can answer for you? Go ahead. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Knott. My name is uh, Peter Paul. Okay. I was calling in regards to um, the, it's called the ABLE account. Uh-huh. I, uh, I was custody of the state of Florida growing up um, all the way to the age of uh, 17, and I unfortunately uh, got charged as an adult and went to prison. Mm -hmm. So upon getting out, I never got, you know, to go through the process for my Social Security. And, you know, I tried to work in the workplace for a while, and there was always problems and stuff. So it took me about 12 years to get my SSI. I've had it now since 2020. I'm very happy. I'm stable in my life. It's great. Okay. My um, landlord has recently told me that if I'm willing to, that she would only charge me half my rent, so just three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And she said that we, you know, we would keep that quiet between us because she said she felt bad because of how tight everything is for me and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And because uh, uh, I bought me my dream car uh, for fifteen hundred dollars, it is a nineteen eighty three Z twenty eight. Mm-hmm. So for fifteen hundred dollars, it is a very, very rough condition car, and so it needs to have money saved up to, uh, so I can do this. So how can I do that? Because the able people said I don't qualify because I didn't get it as a child. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're saying you need to have an accrual of assets, but you're currently, I'm assuming, on SSI benefits. And yeah, I'm on it. yeah, you've got a resource limit, and the car you just bought needs way more than two grand to get it fixed. Yes, it needs a transmission swap, and uh, I've already saved up and bought the transmission. Um, that's actually what I've done over the past two years, and everything that's needed. But now I'm trying to find places that want to do the labor. They at least want a few thousand themselves, and so, and I'm not sure how I can because able I thought was the way you can save up for money for stuff like that. But as they said, you know, I didn't get my SSI as a child, so it doesn't count. Mm. So the question you're asking me is, how do you accrue more resources than the two thousand dollar limit to pay for a vintage car that needs a lot of work? Yeah, needs a transmission swap and yeah, and some welding to the floorboards. Yeah, no, wow. I I can imagine. I can imagine that's uh, that's not a bolt on. Uh, I'm happy to own. It. Yeah, no, I I know I get that it's your dream car, and I get how that goes. I have the same thing with like 1948, 49, 1950, 1951, 52 uh, Chevy uh, long bed uh, trucks. So I oh, get it. Pickup class. Oh, yeah. Super classic pickup. It's probably the best looking Chevy that there was. The 1950 Chevy pickup. Five windows. Just absolutely gorgeous. Um, Still got it? No, no. Uh, COVID hit and wiped out. Yeah. Any cool shit I had got wiped out during COVID. But um, all right. So I know it's not the typical kind of questions for you. I'm sorry if it's off, off, off. Well, the question then becomes, how are you going to get the income to do that? Because, you know, I get you're saying she's going to, you know, cut it in half and then you put that aside. Yeah. You know, it'll take a while to do it, but, uh, you know, I can't have it in my bank account. And and I guess I'll have to hide it and do it all cash, I guess. But then um, will will mechanics be willing to do the work and, and keep it hush hush about the cost and stuff? Oh, I'm sure you find that. I mean, that's no problem. You, you'll find some mechanic is willing to do the swap. That's not the problem. Okay. Um, you know, as an attorney, I have to tell you, you know, you can't, you shouldn't, you know, subvert the law and, you, you know, you have to report any resources above 2000, yada, yada, so on and so forth. Um, what I would say is this. Um, 
uh, how can you do this so that it will work out okay? Um, you might be able to use a really weird, a really weird. So some things are not considered resources because they're held for sentimental value for SSI purposes. So, um, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Um, so this kind of goes into household get or household items, personal effects and things that you basically inherit. <laughs> Examples of personal effects, personal jewelry, personal care items, clothing, pets, such as dog, cat, hamster, educational, recreational items, such as books, musical instruments. You might be able to convert that stuff into something that is of sentimental value and then have to trade that for medical transportation purposes. Silver? No, medical transportation purposes. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, but silver is always held for value. So I don't think you're going to get anywhere in that direction if, with, with buying silver. I mean, if you bought something, which you kind of already did, which was the car. I, man, I got to tell you, like, what were you thinking with buying that car? Because, like, you know, you, it ain't just going to be an LS swap. Yeah. I always wanted a high school. I'm turning 50. I always wanted one. But I mean, like you realize that the transmission is like step one. Like when you go to rebuild one of these trucks and I've done it, I've been there with the welding kit and I've been there with, you know, all the, all the junk and the bolts and the wires and the, this and that. I mean, you, you know, you're pulling out the, 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 the old transmission and you're, you're checking the engine and then all of a sudden you have hosing problems and you can't figure out what's going on. And then you realize there's a cylinder issue. I've been there like, man, I a car guy. Yeah, like I, I gotta tell you, like it's you know, if it's a transmission swap, how do you know the engine's good? Uh, because I can drive it around for about five to seven minutes before it becomes like impossible trying to hammer and kick shift the thing because the old mechanical setup with right. linkages and springs. Right, right. Um, I mean, I mean, look, what most people would do in this situation is they would just put the money aside and then basically uh, go ahead and find somebody under the table. You put it in the shop, they swap out the transmission, you're good to go. Um, but man, I, I'm telling you, like, you, you know, finding somebody who can essentially swap a transmission, that ain't two grand of work. That's more than that, you know? Oh, more than that? Yeah, yeah, swapping a transmission, you get some person that, to do that. I mean, unless they're unless they got a habit that they got to feed, you know, that's that's more money. And remember, when you're swapping transmission, I'm assuming you got to pull the engine, right? So you got to cherry picker this thing. No. You don't have to pull the engine. No, not in this case. The swap's been being done for over 20 years. It's a classic, uh, regular, straightforward swap. Okay. Um, from what I read. From what all right. I, I don't know what's required for that transmission swap, but I will tell you this transmission swaps, engine swaps, you know, and, and we're not talking about pigtails with bunches of wires. We're talking or chips that are an issue. We're talking about hoses, but I mean, I'm telling you, man, I mean, you know, carburetors, hoses, transmissions, engines, that stuff all, when you swap it out, it doesn't work right at first. And it takes a while to get it to like, you know, do what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah. I that they said i'm actually in the uh, in luck because the old brain mm -hmm. on the old model yeah uh, they said it's really straightforward so i'm very lucky for the people that know what they're doing it's supposedly supposed, supposed to be uh i guess easy i mean there's plenty of articles all over the the web and i've watched youtubes plenty of people do it and that's how i acquired all the pieces over the past two years yeah yeah and i got literally thousands of dollars of pieces i now need the the person with the skills. I mean, look, the, the other thing is one car doesn't count. So technically if it's in the car, you know, or around the car, whatever, you could argue that it doesn't, these parts, this stuff, this, whatever doesn't count. And that general upkeep of that vehicle is for medical purposes. I, I could see that working in your favor, you know, uh, I could see you saying, you know, you had to put it aside to go ahead. You know, I could, I could see your arguments against basically a CDR review for an overpayment. But 
man, at the end of the day, you're just, you, we both know what you're going to do. You're just going to go ahead and put the funds aside. You're going to find somebody, to, uh, you know, on the backside to go ahead and, you know, pull it, swap it, you know, run it, test it, and then hand it over. Yeah. I mean, that that's what's going to happen, you know. Oh, you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Here, just heavy stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. So what I would say is this. Um, go ahead and, um, you know, do what you're going to do. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is this. Um, just just make sure you do a full review of that vehicle to make sure everything else is good. Because if you're welding onto any metal at all that's cancerous, like you're going to have a, you know, you're going to go from here we go to, uh, all right, he's going to have to go get some some angle iron to put onto it and start doing some custom fabs, you know? Yeah, because it definitely needs all floorboards. I mean, how rusted out is this thing on the bottom? Because if this thing reaches the frame and there's rust on it, put, yeah. Put two fists underneath your seat to the ground. Man, what are you doing with this car? Old. This is this is the man. Buy it. Just buy a Prius for crying out loud. You know. This is what I always wanted, and I and I could afford it, and I couldn't believe there was one I could afford. You know, and it was a five speed, and it was white, my favorite color. It just. Uh, I've been there. I, always... I know the feeling. I know the excitement. I know the sadness after you pay money and find out you still don't have something that works. So, I take her out for about five minutes once a month, and it is a great feeling. Sure, sure, I, I get it. I get it. Um, it's just, man, you you better find a welder that can build that thing out because if you if you put a transmission on bad metal, you know, because remember those things always shake a little bit. You know, there's always a little bit yeah. of a wiggle. You know, he top model. Everyone says I bought the wrong one. But I love those tea tops. That's another reason sure. I own it, you know? Yeah. I uh, tell you what, let me get to the next caller because I'm I'm getting kind of hit up pretty hard here. So but fun. yeah, I'll catch you a little bit Thank later. You. And you have a wonderful, wonderful night, okay? All right. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, guys, we're gonna do one more call. We're only supposed to do about 30 minutes tonight because I gotta wake up, I gotta work, I gotta do all that jazz. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we can get one more call. One more call on the phone on three. Two, one. We have another car. We have no cars. That's so weird. They were calling the whole time I was on the phone call. Anything? Anything at all? I guess there's no extra callers. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna do one howdy, good call. sir. Remember to mute the computer on your end. Uh, attorney Walter, not. Uh, remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Uh, what is your legal question? Yes, sir. Hey, Attorney Walter. Um, I've been under pretty, well, as you know, I've been under pretty heavy uh, uh, DOJ and CDR review. Um, and uh, after a year, uh, I, I did get an approval from DDS. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it that uh, if, even if I go a mile down the road and I'm, say, gone from my house for 20 minutes, there, there would be a sheriff that would come and find exactly where I'm at. Um, which I would say there is a tracking device on the car or in the car, and it's my mom's old car. But how do you know uh, that? Like, because I know we've talked many times. Like, honestly, there's cops everywhere. Like, everywhere I drive, there's there's always cops. There's always somebody trying to catch up, somebody trying to, you know, interact. Um, I mean, what, like, you know, how how do you de facto know that these people have any interest in you at all? Yes, sir. Um, well, I've gone to doctor's appointments, and when I leave my home, uh, they've intercept me at the stop sign five houses down. But when you say they intercept come. you, like, do they pull you over? Do they frisk you? Like, do they take your car keys from you? Like, what? What? how do they intercept you? Because if they're just there, that's nothing. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, cops are everywhere nowadays. Yes, yes, sir. It's the sheriff's department, the local sheriff's department here, and I'm about, I'm about five miles from the city limits, and then there it turns into the city police. But um, if I have to go to a doctor's appointment, I guess they get a, they know when I'm going to be there, and decide to uh, either be around my area where I live. There's a park down the street and a softball field and a small air small airport that's been there for a while. It's a small private airport for small Cessna planes. 
and they could be sitting down there and see movement and when my car moves and then intercept me at the stop sign. And they have onboard cameras in their cruisers um, mm-hmm. or in their vehicles that can record you and they might get better footage of you than somebody else that's a CDI private PI investigator, I guess. But, but again, um, but, how do you know? Like, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. And I know you had a, 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 sh- a sheriff or somebody call you to go ahead and do a follow up and check in with you. And then you didn't follow up with that. Um, so, I mean, like, how do you know though? Cause remember if somebody, if there's a cop car somewhere, it doesn't mean that they're actually shooting footage of you. It's just a situation where they could be there and you're there, you know? Yeah, multiple, multiple times when I used to go to CVS down the road to pick up prescriptions, mm-hmm. a lot of people like to go through the drive through and, and it could be sometimes an hour sitting in the drive through so I would park and go in, and uh, I've timed it uh, if I'm somewhere for 20 minutes or more, uh, they they show up. And but do they interact with you? Do they, do they literally pull you over? Do they pull you out of the car? Do they ask you for any identification, anything at all? Cause I mean, cops, cops are everywhere. No matter what you do, you know, they're always adding more cops cause they're getting a bigger budget. So uh, are they, have any of them pulled you over? Have any of them asked you to step out of your car? Well, I, I guess that's a different legal circumstance where they'd have to have probable cause to pull you over, and then you would have the right to ask them, have, you know, what crime have I committed? And then if they can't give you a, a reasonable, articulate suspicion of a crime you committed, then you can ask them if you're free to go. And then if they say no, and then they say, well, okay, I just want to understand what I've done. And if they can't give you a reason for what you've done, then you can almost wrap up the situation where you can say, well, I'm not going to be answering any questions. And, so, all right. So and, legal, legal question. Hit me with the legal question. Just the legal question. Yes, sir. After, after uh, DDS makes uh, the decision that you're still found to be disabled um, and you feel that you still have really high surveillance on you, uh, I've had sheriffs even come and stop in front of my house uh, when I have the blinds cracked in my kitchen. Um, but all right, but legal question, legal question. Stay on target. You know, on target here. Yeah. You, you still feel that they're investigating you. You've completed a CDR. What's the legal question? Yes, sir. Um, so after they make this, after DDS makes a decision, can OIJ, uh, DOJ, and CDI and Office of Inspector General, can they then get with DDS to see what your strong points were on your case that won your case and then try to see if they have any type of chance to appeal that decision and then send in cut footage of you if they've if they have gotten video footage of you or do they send that in before the decision is made from DDS to for, the, for DDS to make the decision. If they were going to do an ROI, they've already cleared you. So if the ROI report was sent in uh, from the CDI unit to OIG and then OIG interacted with DDS, DDS has already cleared you. So at this point, they can always re, you know, begin the process of investigating you. They can always do that. But the bottom line, and this is very important, is that you're not under investigation now that you cleared that. Can they do it in the future? Absolutely. Do they have any reason to? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But if none of them have pulled you over, interacted with you, or walked up to you, almost extremely unlikely that they're going to be investigating you in any current fashion. All right. Okay. Yes, Perfect. sir. And I, I, the, um, the Freedom of Information Act, you had mm-hmm. guided me to get that request. Um, I did submit that, and it took a while, two months, and then. Um, I got an email saying that they basically couldn't confirm anything. They said to me in the, in the email from Baltimore, Maryland, that if there was an investigation that was still ongoing, that they couldn't give me any any information about it or confirm that I was under a level investiga- of investigation where they have somehow acquired a warrant to put tracking devices on my cars. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but that came back a negative, that, right? Um, they wouldn't confirm nor deny. The, the fellow there wouldn't confirm to me, and he said that I would re- I have to, I would need to resubmit that information that I had already filled out and turned in 
the correct way to them and okay. went to their main office in Baltimore. Did, yes. you, did you resubmit he want, it? He wants me to resubmit it to the local field office. And he instructed me that I need to go to the local field office and make an appearance there and submit it there, like me being there in person. And based on this level of investigation I've been under with sheriffs sitting outside the grocery store, sheriffs coming into CVS, I've got video of them coming by my house multiple times and then sometimes stopping in front of my house and then following me down the road or trailing behind me. Okay, so let me jump in. So, man, and just yes. keep in mind, we're, we're at seven minutes now. I'm going to pop over to the next caller. Um, but bottom line is submit that additional FOIA. That way you feel okay with the current standing of, as to whether or not they're continuing an investigation. All right? And so if I've gotten that approval so, letter, I'm okay? Like they can't go back and appeal that decision? They, they can uh, go ahead and change it and reinvestigate you. But I'm going to take the next caller. All right? You have a wonderful night, Okay. Yes, sir. Is it two months? I have to wait for that to clear. What What's the window they have to do that? If you don't mind me asking that. To, to appeal it or begin a new... Pr- they can start a new investigation at any point. They reserve that right. If anything that potentially could be fraud pops up, they can take a look at it immediately. But I'm going to take the next caller that's calling in. You have a wonderful, wonderful night, okay? Yes, sir. Perfect. It's Thank a- you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, cool. So we're going to take one more caller. We're going to go with one more caller. Um, Keep in mind, if you are calling in and I'm on the phone, uh, there is one person that keeps calling over and over and over again. That's not the actual person, but we'll just do this. This will be the final call. All right. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. Remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Uh, What is your legal question? Go ahead. The question that I have is that I'm on SSI and I'm dual diagnosed, physical and mentally disabled, and I live in New York and I can't afford nowhere to live on the amount that I'm getting, which is 943. I have someone who's willing to help me out, but they're on SSDI. And as far as I heard, Social Security said that they would diminish one of our checks. Is that true? No, no. If you're if one's on SSI and one's on SSDI, they don't diminish the check. So, but, um, so then I can, because I, I haven't claimed where I'm living at because I put down homeless because I didn't want to get her in trouble. Nope. It's not going to affect you. So it's not going to affect her either. No. I mean, if she's earning extra money and you're somehow married and then you get deemed, it's going to affect you, but you guys aren't, you're, this is not a marriage situation, right? Right. No, it's not a marriage situation and she's on SSDI permanently and I'm on SSI. Okay. And you're not holding yourself out as being a couple, right? No. Yeah, then you should be I fine. It's not going to affect so, you. So I won't bother. So I can so I can claim myself, and I can send a uh, copy of receipt of a lease to SSI, and I can get more benefits. Then, so they see I'm paying rent. You're not going to get more. Right I mean, now, they got me. Home. You're at nine forty three, right? Me. Yeah, that's the max. I, I mean, that's it. That's what that's you get on SSI. Max. You can get a state supplement on top of that, but you can't get any more from the feds. Okay, because um, I, I can't even afford rent. To be honest with you. Yeah, well, I mean, she'll you have to pay work. her share and you'll have to pay your share. Right. I just want to double check that she wouldn't get in any trouble. Any, any, you know, Social Security won't bother her because she can't lose her disability either. She's, she's worse than I am. Yeah. You, yeah. That's, that's fine. It's not going to affect the benefits. You guys should be okay. Yeah. All right. I, yes, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your help and time. Absolutely good, sir. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. You too, sir. Thank Bye. you. Bye bye. Hi, this is attorney. Okay, cool. So that phone call didn't go through. Um, yeah, so here's the deal. We we did a bunch. We're at 43 minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it there because I'm just super, I'm feeling the time. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm starting to like droop down a little bit. Um, I will catch you guys next Tuesday. I don't know if I'll be live on Facebook or if I'll just do it on YouTube um, because I just like YouTube system better. And, uh, you know, it's just people know to go there and I can always just repost it to Facebook. But the bottom line is, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Click the all button. I will catch you guys on Tuesday or Thursday of next week. Uh, And then basically with that said, 
Uh, make sure you have your legal questions ready to go right up front. And then uh, with all that, I hope you enjoy these videos. I did see a donation. I just wanted to go ahead and do a call out real quick for Gisela P uh, for the 499 donation. That's absolutely amazing. And I really, really appreciate it. Uh, please remember if you will have like a really big question or whatever, and it's going to take more than five to seven minutes, you can always hire me for the hour. That's the private hour for 250 bucks. It's in the bio link below. Uh, and then other than that, if, of course, if you need disability benefits or representation for SSI or SSDI, give me a call. I'll be at the law firm. Same number, same time, same fun, all the excitement. All right. I will catch you a little bit later. That phone is really ringing and you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you later. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful night and, uh, and be safe. All right. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.